you say to these families? Cosmo, you admitted to killing four people. Why'd you do it? What do you have to say to these families, Cosmo? Anything to say? Even a sympathy? Even you're sorry? I'm sorry. Philadelphia police were at this home on the 800 block of McGee Avenue in Lawndale late last night. As sources say, they took a second person into custody in connection with the case. That man was later seen being escorted from Northeast detectives and put into a vehicle overnight. This morning, investigators searched a property in Ambler in connection with the second person taken into custody. This all comes after 20-year-old Cosmo DiNardo of Ben Salem confessed to participating in or committing the murders of four missing men yesterday. And I said to him, yo, why are you doing this? I say, like, your family has money. You don't need to rob them. He's like telling them he's got pounds of weed, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have the pounds of weed. He, he's just going off. Sean Kratz's mom convinces him to confess. Save yourself because he'll bury you just like you did to those four boys, okay? Save yourself. You can't bring them back, but you can give them justice, okay? It's fine. I, I don't know why we're related to them. It's okay. We're not related now. But Kratz only gives a partial confession, detailing how DiNardo shot Mayo and Sturgis, eventually crushing Mayo with a backhoe. They act like they're getting ready to do a transaction, Cosmo pulls a gun off his hip, uh -huh. shoots this way, and then shoots this way, shooting both of the two, the second and third victims. Okay. Dropping the one, he collapsed. Okay. One was yelling, then he tells him he was going to take him to the hospital. I start to throw up. Kratz initially denies killing Finicaro, then later he confessed. I pulled the gun out. You know, I, I, I aimed it in the air, closed my eyes, and, and fired a shot. Cosmo fired, fired a shot. I don't know if he fired, I know he fired at least one. I don't know if he fired more than one. By that point, I, you know, kind of rushed out the barn and kind of, you know, spit up, you know, was mm -hmm. just all dramatic and shaking up over it. And Cosmo came out, you know, with the gun in his hand laughing like, Relax, you ain't never see a, a, a dead body. Defense attorney Chuck Peruto took over for Kratz's original attorney and handled his appeal and trial. He says Donardo's mother and Kratz's mother encouraged the cousins to develop a friendship, hoping they would be a good influence on one another. Give us a little bit of insight into what that relationship really was like. You have Cosmo, an overbearing idol, as far as Sean is concerned. Sean never get to enjoy anything in life, like riding on four-wheelers, horses, all this ground, shooting guns, neat stuff. So the parents, the cousins themselves, get together and they decide that Sean should get together with Cosmo down the shore. Lethal combination. Sean is a follower. Cosmo is a leader, but a leader in a bad way. They go down and they hatch this plan where they're going to go target practicing on Cosmo's land. And Sean is eating this up. Wow, firing guns with real bullets. This is cool. We're going to ride four-wheelers. This is cool. Even if you read Cosmo's confession, there was no talk about killing people. Sean had just been shot 19 times a couple of months before. So he was 118 pounds at the time. He was fragile. So he goes up there. They do have target practice. And then Cosmo starts talking crazy. He was kept talking about selling weed and drug deals and, and guns. Like this mobster type of guy. And this is my cousin. Once he realized that Sean may be, be receptive to this, Cosmo starts talking very crazy. And Sean, instead of saying what an average normal person would say, he sucks it up for three reasons. One, his brain is mush. The poor kid is just not that bright. He was, he was tested twice by two, diff two different doctors, or at 79 on IQ, which is very, very low. So he's a sponge. He's going to suck, soak this up. Two, 
Cosmo is very domineering. He just, you know, after knowing, you know, what he's capable of, scared, not only for myself, you know, for for others. Then, in a surprise move, Donardo's cousin, Sean Kratz, who's linked to three of the murders, rejected his plea deal just moments before his hearing was set to begin this afternoon. I'm disheartened about the rejection because I just feel so badly for these families. They were prepared today to have this saga in their life be over. Under the rejected deal, Kratz would have been sentenced to 59 to 118 years in jail. Now, though, his case will go to trial and prosecutors will seek the death penalty. The same day prosecutors were negotiating that plea deal for Kratz, the families arrived to give their impact statements at DiNardo's plea. The last statement of the day was from Mark Sturgis's mom when she mentioned that her two daughters were left with part of a mother now because part of her has been lost through Mark's death. Kratz heads to trial for the deaths of Finicaro, Sturgis, and Mayo. His attorney says it was kill or be killed. He closed his eyes and pulled the trigger. But he had an honest belief that Cosmo was testing him at the time because Dean couldn't see him. Dean was turned around. And he thought the gun was going to go click because he didn't think it was possibly have bullets in it. And he didn't know if Cosmo had another gun, that if he didn't shoot him, he would shoot him. I don't buy that. I think he was dragged into this set of circumstances because of Cosmo DiNardo but he did not have clean hands coming to this uh, coming to this situation. Breaking right now, guilty verdicts from a Bucks County jury tasked with deciding the case against Sean Kratz. He's the accomplice now convicted for his role in the high profile murders of four men back in the summer of 2017. Action News reporter Annie McCormick was inside the courtroom when that verdict was read today. She's live now outside the courthouse with the scene from there. And Brian and Chrissy, it took nearly 18 hours of deliberations, but those jurors came to their decision this afternoon. 22-year-old Sean Kratz of Philadelphia found guilty of first and second degree murder in the death of Dean Finicaro. Additionally, jurors found him guilty of voluntary manslaughter in the deaths of Thomas Mayo and Mark Sturgis. Kratz's conviction qualifies him for the death penalty. Again, the families came together to make the decision. Persuaded by Finicaro's family, they do not pursue the death penalty. He was convicted last week for his role in the murders of four young men found buried at a Bucks County farm. Today, more than two years after that grisly crime, Sean Kratz has learned his punishment. He'll now spend life in prison. Action News is Walter Perez live now at the courthouse in Doylestown where that sentence was handed down. Walter, lots of emotion in that courtroom today. That's right, Brian and Jeanette. The day started with a surprise move, first of all, by the prosecution. D.A. Matt Weintraub deciding to drop the option for the death penalty in this case. Now, the D.A. says he did discuss this plan with the family members beforehand, admitting the support was not unanimous, but there was a consensus. And he was an utter and miserable failure. That is Bucks County DA Matt Weintraub's assessment of Sean Kratz, who today was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Weintraub saying he is happy that the jury did not buy the defense claim that Kratz was too afraid and unintelligent to thwart the murders of four young men during the summer of 2017. We miss Jimmy every day. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't cry or think of Jimmy. Had he not had access to the gun, the backhoe, the pig roaster, uh, and the farm itself, uh, this crime could not have been committed. DiNardo had been known to police since he was 14 years old. Court documents stated he suffered from mental illness and had been the subject of an involuntary commitment to a mental institution. The DiNardos filed suit against the University of Pennsylvania Health System for negligent psychiatrist treatment in 2020. His mother, Sandra, gave an interview to Philadelphia Magazine explaining what led up to his erratic behavior, claiming he was diagnosed with major depressive disorder and a head injury in 2016. Sandra would ultimately seek help from at least 10 different psychiatrists and psychologists at eight different hospitals and mental health clinics. 
She also turned to the Catholic Church. Cosmo warned her that he was under spiritual attack and was hearing voices telling him to do violent things. She turned to the church for help, asking her parish priest to perform a spiritual cleansing of her house to exorcise any demons that might be lurking. declared that Cosmo's bipolar disorder was in full remission and that he'd reduced his medications. That day in the office, according to the suit, he completely stopped Cosmo's medications. Did you murder Jimmy Tarkak? Yes, I did. Yes, I who murdered Mark Sturgis. And who is this? I murdered Tom Mayo. There is still one question that remains. Did Cosmo DiNardo kill before? Versus Tell Action News, DiNardo said he participated in the murder of a woman who was then set on fire in a basement and the murder of another man but gave only a nickname. He said both murders happened five years ago, but then added that killings could have happened last year. Investigators point out DiNardo has a history of mental health issues. When you're dealing with someone that seems like they're pathological like that, you, you don't know where they're coming from. You don't know what their state of mind was. Do you think Jimmy Patrick was the first person that, do you think these four boys are the only people that he's killed? Yes. Okay. Do you think that if they hadn't had families that were looking for them and it had taken much longer to realize that they were all missing, that he could have kept killing? Yes. The motive for all of this? I'm not really sure if we could ever answer that question.